What's up guys, this is my channel Robotic Perception. Uh, I'll be doing tutorials on image processing, computer vision, deep learning, you name it. Anything that has to deal with how ro robots perceive their environment. So this first, these first tutorials are going to be on simple, more beginner image processing techniques and computer vision techniques. So we're going to start off by a simple shape recognition program. So this program is just going to be able to find the images in this JPEG, so this triangle, square, cross, etc. So we'll be handcrafting features from here. So that sounds super intense, super hard, I know, but it's actually not that bad at all. A lot of people think, oh, handcrafting features is very difficult, but it's on the contrary. All it is is what makes a triangle a triangle? Three sides. Add the angles add up to 180, that's a triangle. So we'll just be using contours, uh, contours and some handcrafted features to basically recognize these shapes and complete our program. So we'll go ahead and start off by just importing some stuff. So obviously you need to import OpenCV need to import NumPy and we'll be importing math. We won't be using math this tutorial but hey, might as well import it. So our first class, we'll be creating a class called Shape Recognition and in my tutorials I'll be using object orientations. It, I feel like it's very, it's more modular and it's just easier to follow along and it's just more organized for my eyes. And that's what I prefer. So if you don't know object orientation, then definitely go check out some object, object orientation Python videos, please, before you watch these, because I really don't want you to be lost. I want you to focus more on the image processing techniques themselves. So we'll be creating an initial function, and this will be creating our, our class variables which will be just an image that's being passed to this class. So we'll be create. I like to create the object right as I create the class because I want to start testing it. And the object itself is going to have a lowercase s, the class is going to have an uppercase s. So I have to pass an image to this class. How do I read an image in OpenCV? It's really easy. OpenCV takes away from a lot of the obscurity of image processing in general so it's pretty nice so oops you use cv2 I'm red and I'm, my file is called shapes.jpg not shapes.image and the first step is before you do any project in computer vision is you want to just take a step back and look at what you need to do so just like computer science, you literally want to write down on a piece of paper what you want to do and how you're going to do it. Because I guarantee the first couple methods you think of aren't going to work. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to show the image. And then we're going to just kind of talk about it and how we're going to go about this project. So open CV, you show an image by doing I'm show, and then you if you don't use, if you don't add these next two lines right here, wait key and destroy all windows, then the window is just going to come up and disappear. So you have to, the wait key basically is a listener, and once you hit escape, then it'll destroy all windows, but it'll keep the windows open until you hit escape. So we're just going to run this real quick, and the image is going to come up. So as you can see, it's right here, pretty simple, and as you can tell, it's just a white and black image. So how are we going to create contours from this? Contours are basically the outlines. From those outlines of these shapes, we can detect, oh, what are the sides, what are the angles, and so on, that we'll be doing later on in this tutorial. So the first thing you have to do before you feed any image into the contour function of OpenCV is you have to create, you basically have to create the, I like to call it the binary image. So it's like the reversed. So the shapes are going to be white and everything else will become black. So there's several ways you can do this. You can use candy edge. You 
well, any sort of edge algorithm, Gaussian uh, difference of Gaussians, uh, Sobel edges, uh, Canny edges, which I'm sure we'll be getting up to later on in one of my later tutorials. But you can also uh, create a mask. Basically, what that is is you're only displaying certain pixels of an RGB range that you want to show. So a mask is better when you know exactly what you're supposed to be looking at. So we know exactly that our shapes are black and the background's white. So that's a huge, they're hugely different. The, like the shapes are hugely different from the background so you can create a mask. If you have more of a dynamic project where the colors can change, the edges can change, then I recommend doing canny edge or sobel edges or some sort of edge algorithm to feed in the contours instead of creating a mask or thresholding for a certain HSV hue saturation value, which is also another method. So at first, we'll be creating a pre-processing step. This pre-processing step is simply going to create the lower and upper ranges of black. So lower is going to be equal to, we use a NumPy array. So we have to use OpenCV, Python uses all NumPy arrays. So that makes it really easy to create kind of like color ranges like this and to splice our images and create region of interest that will that like you guys will learn about later on in this tutorial series. Actually maybe not in this tutorial series, but definitely the next one or the one after. So we created a lower range of 0, 0, 0. Obviously that's black. And then 15, 15, 15 which is going to be just the upper range. So that's prob that's kind of like light black. And OpenCV has a really cool function called in range. And basically all that does is it creates a mask and it will only display pixels that are in range of the lower and upper values that you've already selected. So We'll pass in self.image and then lower and then upper. So now only the black is going to be, should be displayed. So you know how in computer science when you're developing a program, you lose, you use a ton of print statements to kind of debug, to make sure the program's running the way you want to. In OpenCV, you use I'm show. You basically want to see every step of what you're trying to do of the image to make sure that that steps doing that properly. So we're going to show the mask and we just need to call the preprocessing function from our object and we'll call that. There you go. As you can tell, the white become black and then black become white. So now we've created our binary image. Now all we have to do is feed this through the con OpenCV's contour algorithm. So basically what contours are is it connects it connects it connects the uh, the outline of the images. So it's basically gonna connect it's gonna draw around the outline of the images and feed all those points to you in this contours list right here. And the flags, the flag variable is just a, um, basically just tells you if the function was successful or not. And then the hierarchy tells you how the contours lie within each other, like is a contour inside another contour, and so on. And we will actually be using that in the next tutorial. So you'll get to see that and it's actually very useful, very useful thing. So we use cv2.bindContours and that binds all the contours of our image and we're just going to return contours right now. In our next tutorial we will be using those contours to um, approximate the size of the objects and then we'll be using some handcrafted features that we'll come up with to compare sides and compare angles and find out which shape is actually 
a rectangle or what shape's actually a triangle. So it's really cool. So just so you know, we'll go ahead and print this out. So I think it's really cool to also, you also need to use print statements in image processing because it's interesting to see how values are printed out. So as you can tell, look at all these points that are printed out. These are contours. So in our next video, we'll show how to take all these points and basically approximate them so you only get a few points. And it's a very, very useful method that helps in a ton of applications. So see you guys next time in my next tutorial. Bye.